sure it's gonna start this time. I think we are started already, so fuck it. Okay. Um, um, so we're thinking to start out. You want you've been excited about this whole D and D thing. Yes, I want to be able to play a game because I've not been able to play a proper one in a while. It's been years. And the last time I played with you guys, I was so shitty that I was just bullshitting half the time. <laughs> That's my favorite part. You can bullshit. Um, we figure it out along the way anyhow. Yeah, it's been probably longer since I played a game since you have. Probably, uh... <laughs> yeah, as well as like, but I don't mind it. I'm like I'm been working on a. Uh, writing up a couple stories and stuff, working on my own campaigns. And until then, I figured what we can do is uh, using uh, my self-proclaimed skill of being able to make things up on the spot, I'm going to use the aid of a RPG generator, RPG generator app. RPGG? RPGG. A-P-P. A- oh, yeah. God, that's too many letters, It's man. for your ASS. That did make me spell shit. <laughs> I don't like words. And uh, using that, you know, it's got all kinds of items within it where I can uh, basically generate any kind of little tidbits of information I need, anything from random diseases to encounters or uh, items, any NPCs, town names. Basically, uh, using a bit of a push from the app, I can keep a story, you know, making it up and surprising myself along the way as much as I am you, which I guess I should specify that uh, due to the fact that we know fucking nobody outside of our jobs. <laughs> We're losers. You have me. And you're a fucking loser. <laughs> running the campaign. <laughs> and this guy, also a fucking loser since he won't call himself <laughs> out here. Uh, <laughs> I'm a beautiful person, so. Beautiful loser. <laughs> Oh, Not so much a beautiful mind, but <laughs> oh, hell no. it's just us. So I'm going to be running a campaign, and in the vein of a video game that Skuma here enjoys very much, which I guess, hi, this is Skuma. Hi. Wait, hi, Skuma. I don't Fuck you guys, anything. you don't have to see what we're actually <laughs> doing. Um, and I'm Eb. Introductions came late, deal with it. I mean, uh, it should be somewhere. If they don't know it by now, then we failed. What do you mean by now? There's nothing on my channel. <laughs> Listen, man, I have one video up right now, and it is bussin'. I had one video <laughs> up, and I privatized it. <laughs> you won't get any money from it? No, I mean, no one can view it without the link. <laughs> I don't want to fuck those people. <laughs> and I just want anybody uh, to see my like, yet. Yeah. But uh, in, in the vein of a video game Skuma here enjoys, uh, XCOM. Indeed, indeed. I haven't been able to play it for a while because I don't have a fucking Xbox. But, but uh, I'll use my PlayStation for now. With XCOM in mind, I'm going to run a level 1 D&D campaign, present Skuma here with a few options of some... Playable characters I've randomly generated, all at level one, as I said. And he'll pick a few to form a party, and I will make him up a a campaign on the spot, I suppose. And with a, a lot of fumbling and figuring things out, we're going to have a, a, a little two-man D&D game where this one poor soul... Is gonna have to play four characters <laughs> with permadeath. Absolutely, permadeath. <laughs> That's the fun thing about XCOM. It's hard to be. And, you know, <laughs> I, I assume, like I said, making everything up on the spot. Even this, I assume, if a player drops somewhere along the way, I'm not just gonna ship in and reinforcement immediately. You'll have to reach a point where you can call for a replacement. Yeah, I've decided on base. that rule now. Get back to base. Or, you know, power through and uh, then, I don't know, get get out and signal for, for, uh, for hey, Gondor calls for aid! I, th- I think I can do it. You know, see, you showed me your hands earlier with some stories you like to tell me, and if you ever do, do bring in, like, the characters you've been talking about, I know how to exploit them. And it's ah. going to be amazing. No, 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 you only know of one character. You can't exploit something that I control. 
Like, the little tinkerer buddy's not going to be much good in a fight. You can have some ideas that he can try to work on, but there's there's always going to be random elements that decide how it works out. And, like, the only other character I've mentioned to you is uh, my little uh, side character who's just going to be there. He's, he's my uh, my wandering merchant. All right. Uh, give me one minute. I'm going to get a pen and paper. You just read me off the characters. Uh, <laughs> I'll do a quick thing to what I want. But, and then uh, you figure out what to do. But I, I'll give you, like, I just, in a moment of uh, inspiration, this guy came to mind, and I was like, I like the cute idea of a, of a wandering caravan trader who just, you know, travels the land always seeming to show up from time to time, being the one shop you ever find roaming around. Just He's just there. It doesn't matter what hell you went through to get there and how quickly you managed to achieve it. He's somehow there and fine, always. Whenever there's a shop, he's the shop. So basically he's a guy, whenever you go to fight a god, he's like, hey, need something? <laughs> yes. But, uh, yes, so, we do. We so need I, uh, a lot. I called him my reappearing merchant. He is, his name is Squee. He's the humanoid mouse. He's the humble om- owner of a wandering like a caravan. Size? Like, wait, is, wait, is he mouse size or is he? Should, like, are we looking at so a ratatouille? Or are we I'm looking at a say Master Splinter? I mean, he's absolutely a mouse. Say, if Master Splinter was about the size of a of a Labrador. Okay, so he's just a little bit smaller. So in case you know he, he fucks around, I can eat him. Like. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. He may uh, be an old mouse man, but he was an adventurer himself one day. Like he, he's got skills in his past, and uh, I'm sure like you could feel that when you when you see it and see the way he gets around somehow better than you do. Oh shit! Then does he want to join the party? Absolutely fucking not. He's got uh, a business to run. Uh, 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 yeah, he was an adventurer long ago. Now he uh, he travels around selling his wares. Hunched over on his cane, wearing nothing but a loosely fitted cloak and a bandolier loaded up with knives. Okay, so does he actually sell good shit or is it just trash? He sells whatever he sells. Oh, yeah, are we just going to show up one time he's just selling cabbages on the side of the road? Like, hey. I just love that like, <laughs> that, that, that description. I just love it. Like, it just this little, little mouse dude leaned over on his cane wearing nothing but basically a bathrobe. That isn't even tied very well. <laughs> Wait, how old is this guy? Because I feel like if we're using mice, he's not going to be too much longer. And I feel sorry for him if he ever has to go. Well, what do you know? <laughs> I don't I guess. Shit, yeah, yeah. this is a mortal fucking mouse. I've been around for 8,000 years. Hey, man, maybe, maybe he's <laughs> just you know, got experience. He knows the, the terrain. And he's got, uh, maybe, no, he's earned a little bit along the way. It keeps him going. We never know. You just know he's older than you are. Uh, he shows he shows his wear and tear. Do we ever see him disappear? But he uh, still maybe a fucking owl just comes in. He still always he still always rolls in. You know, he, a, a big grin shining on his face. Uh, maybe a couple teeth missing here or there, but still Aww. still some visible fangs. And uh, that that uh, a bit of a, a look in his eye that seems like he may have uh, lost a few screws a long time ago as well. Oh, I don't want a crazy old. Mouse, I want to be like a Speedy Gonzales. <laughs> yeah, he's on. He, he's on a cane. Oh, but he's just, pretending. I don't, I don't, he's I don't care pretending. to repeat myself. I just love <laughs> I, that visual of him, short, hunched over, basically naked, flapping in the breeze. <laughs> nothing but tattered old robe on him, hunched over, but that that, that leather strap just loaded up with blades. Right, so he's not wearing pants. Just a robe. Dude, have you Just ever a seen a mouse with balls? <laughs> this dude fucking dragon. <laughs> hey, man, dragons are the thing of legends. <laughs> Legendary dragon. <laughs> it's the dragon balls. <laughs> they leave a trail behind them in the dust. That's the only way you could ever find this merchant. <laughs> to watch for the dragon. It's actually how he earned his name. Like He, he was... He used to walk around, you know, had, had two people following him, but uh, every now and then they'd step on him. Aww. You know what I mean? And then he goes, squee! Oh, this, you think he's not the nut play? That'd be the best day ever. Ah, poor little mouse nuts. I don't but, know why I'm thinking about mouse nuts. I got my, my little, uh, my little, my little shop keep squee. And then I also told you about the, uh, it, basically he's a, an NPC 
companion type. His name is Brark. <laughs> Bar chicken. He's a young Ericocro, if that's pronounced properly. Oh, fuck. It's a um, bird, bird, bird guy. He's, bird he's bird a, person. He, yeah, he's a bird person. Bird person. Uh, he's an inventor. Yeah, he's, he's just this young teenager. Not much skill in anything, but the fact that he like he stayed home learning how to tinker. And that's what he does. He's a, he's a bit of a fool. You know, he's got no street smarts. He, he's gullible, you know. So we manipulate too, this fucker far to too do what we want. I mean, far too trusting. But, uh, you know, he, he's, he's, oh, he's got potential and he's smart. Like, uh, one thing he, one of his personal pride items he carries around for self-defense is something he called the shock block. It's a, uh, it's a small cube. It, uh, he, he actually fashioned it out of dwarven metal. Imagine, um, in the, uh, you ever watched the Hellraiser movies? I have not. I don't watch You know movies. the box? I know the box. You know the Pandora's box? Pandora's box, I think? No. It's, no, it's a puzzle box. Yeah, I thought it had But just name. basically picture a, uh, a very, like, well, you know, crafted... Square. Yes, perfect. <laughs> you know, a, a cube... I'm thinking maybe dwarven metal, like from the Skyrim. Yeah, yeah, like you that know, bronze you know, kind, kind of kind of ornate patterning, which runes are carved into it, and uh, it, you know you can hear a couple of the whirring mechanisms inside. But uh, what it is is that he has it set to where he depresses a button on it, tosses it into wherever his thread is, and after a three second delay, it emits a pulse in every direction that reaches up to five feet. And what does the pulse do? It causes uh, an electrical, a magic-based electrical shock, because it is, de- you, know, you have to determine what type of damage it is. It's a magic-based electrical shock that uh, deals a small amount of damage and also requires anything struck by it to make a constitution save to determine whether or not they get stunned. So basically, it's, it's a portable taser that... He has to run away from, because he hasn't figured out a way to use it safely. Well, okay, so how much is it to make one? It's all about resources. I mean, and items are he cool, doesn't but have is a it job. worth a damn? It's worth a damn for, to him, because I... the fool tends to get himself in trouble. You wouldn't imagine the fucking urchins in the street who con him into walking into a dark place... More times than he should be willing to admit, just for you know, a few teen years old. I mean, is he, can he pickpocket? No, he can't sneak. Oh. What I'm saying is he's he's been baited into situations where he had to learn to make something that could help him get away from, you know, say, muggers, which he might have a problem with. So basically he's a, like a MacGyver. He's, he's a, yes. He but, can but, get out of any situation with his, uh, uh, yeah, his tinkering. Yeah, a few things, and he'll try to th- he'll slap an idea together. But uh, for an example of the shock block, a really good potential item, but he hasn't figured out how to direct it. So if he hits the button and doesn't get out of range, he gets hit too. <laughs> All right, can I upgrade the shock box? Because I have an idea of how I can make it benefit even more. Well, this isn't. Uh, you'd have to talk to him about that, and you so, haven't even met him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to train him in order to do like create not only just a shock box, you're but it also fire. Train it, your it, what character's it does gonna is, have mechanical engineering. Fuck yeah! And then I'm gonna train him to make a little box that it's, it's an electric box, but it heats up it. And so, after it's created, when he asks, what's it for, I'm going to take a bucket of fried chicken and put it in that. Uh, if you intend to be designing warm, anything beyond I'm ideas... Gonna, I'm going to let him know that if he fucks up... If you design anything on, beyond, beyond, like, basic idea levels, like, if you want to be able to come up with, like, t- trying to tell him how to make it work, you're going to have something better than his tinkerer skill. Or otherwise, you're just going to tell him, I... Need a fried chicken dispenser? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna threaten him somehow. <laughs> the I don't rest is his to figure out. If he doesn't get what I Why want, you gotta I'm gonna threaten him. I introduced <laughs> him as a companion, and now he's your little man slave? <laughs> he's a bird slave. <laughs> Was it the bird. name? Did you like lose <laughs> all respect for him? I might have some biases against birds. <laughs> you, you know what? You have to pronounce his name for me. Repeat it back. Bach? No. I'll spell it to you. B-L-A-A-R-K. Blark? No. Blark! 
Blark. <laughs> Blark, come over here. Yeah, like Paul Blark Molochon. <laughs> Paul Blark. <laughs> come here, little bastard. I don't want this guy. I'm going to have to fuck him up because I'm going to want too much out of him. Jesus Make my guys. I will be my grenade slave. You can't do this. If I could... If, this is why I can't tell you things early. <laughs> you want to abuse my friend. <laughs> and man, anything to win. I love my characters when I make my characters. <laughs> you know nothing about my paladin. Well, okay, I don't even know who my characters are. Yeah, I've already made three. <laughs> and generated eight more. Alright, well, you said you got the thing for the to mm. pick the couple, mm. so... Oh, yeah. He ran right down eight entire character sheets. Figure out which was the best <laughs> one. Yeah, no, we'll, uh, we'll shorthand this. All right, quick rundown. Uh, let me get uh, wherever I stored that. Here we go. All right, okay. so, character number one. I don't know. I'm, I'm writing down the... Uh... N we'll... Okay, yeah, we'll do it. We'll go full system. All right. Got three for now. Okay, character number one. Nator Holthorn. Holthern. I'm not gonna remember names, bro. I can tell you that. Much. Well, that's why I'm aiming the, the the screen at you, so you can write that down. You don't want to read. Uh, I'd rather you just I'm do a, a quick fool. rundown, read it off to me. Okay. Nader Holthorn. Holthern. Half. Hey, uh, this guy. He is a hill dwarf, a cleric. Ooh. Okay. And a that's guild cool. artisan. I don't know what that will help. That's me just with, his but... background. Okay. <laughs> Um, it means no, he's good at crafting, so you could do like stonework and stuff. Like if you needed to like make a kiln for, so for someone to burn and something. Bark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta have them work together. <laughs> but yeah, he's a he, he's a cleric. All right, so he uses a good. war hammer and a light crossbow. Yeah, so you you don't have to jot all this stuff down. I'm just kind of giving you the overview. All right. You, um, let's see. I'll uh. See if there's anything more particular here. Yeah, the stats. All right, you want the stats? Of course I want the stats. You want the stats? Oh, well, I want the stats. This All right, stats. I see strength of 13. All right. Dex of 10. Yeah, so I see short and stout, so it makes sense. Constitution, 16. Ooh, okay. And 8 on intelligence. That'd be dumb. 16 on wisdom. That's good. And 12 in charisma. That's not good. Well, for a cleric, I guess. I'm thinking paladin. Yeah, huh? I mean, you got mostly positive modifiers there. Now, does it say what kind of weapons he's proficient with? Because, I don't know. Proficiencies. Let's see, good alignment, arson, background, build membership, ba 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 Like, we have not done much of the D&D. Tool proficiencies have got brewer supplies. I guess he makes drinks. Hells, yeah. He gonna get... Well, okay, his uh, player features, he has ritual casting and discipline of life, which is a healing bonus. Cantrips are light... Resistance, spare the dying, thaumaturgy. I don't know what those are. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll, see, that's <laughs> we'll figure it out. We got this into a shore system, so they don't have to listen to another seven of these uh, character sheets. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is so okay, you've got a hill dwarf cleric. Now next. Okay, when you say their stats, should give me the top three. That's the most important. The three highest stats. Yeah. Okay. Next is uh, Saluthian Sirak, a high elf. Cleric. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So wisdom fifteen, constitution fourteen, and dex and charisma tied at twelve. Is it charisma? Yep. All right, that's not too bad. They use a long sword and a light crossbow. I do like the long crossbow. They have the ray of frost cantrip. I do like that. And uh, the sacred flame cantrip. They also know light and thaumaturgy as well. We'll figure out what that is later. Yeah. Let's see, the first guy, Nator, knew uh, Bless, Cure Wounds, Command Bane, Inflict Wounds, and Healing Word for spells. So no Bless, but, or I want to say Bless, like, just up Yeah, that Bless is something. Maybe that, like, maybe it kind of, like, adds, like, a uh, an Inspiration die or something, like a little D4. Uh, we'll, that's all stuff we can look at. Wait, so into. what were the Healing Spells called? Well, they knew Healing Word. Both of them? Wow. Nator has, like, no special, like, magic feats, whereas Seleucian has two. What are those feats? I told you, Sacred Flame and Ray of Frost. Okay, so those are just cantrips or spells? Uh, yeah, yeah. they're cantrips. The only mm -hmm. difference is Nator knows no Spare the Dying, which maybe is like, kind of like helps you against save, death saving throws. It's just what you call it feats, where I'm more Pathfinder. When I think of feats, I think of special abilities, not I mean, magic. That falls into that area. 
magic feats, and special attacks are the same category. Um, you've got a rock gnome fighter. Uses a scimitar and a hand crossbow. It is uh, skilled in two weapon fighting. So I think you could actually dual use this. Dual scimitars. Yes, but it doesn't say specifically dual wield. It says oh, two yeah. weapon fighting. So maybe even potentially like shooting and swinging. Maybe at a disadvantage on the shots. As the DM, I could see that being well, What reasonable. kind of crossbow was it? Hand crossbow. Oh, okay. Only can, because of reloading limits, you can only shoot it once per round. And take, uh, how long does it take to reload? I mean, I assume that means... Uh, I need a free hand at least. Yeah. It's all, all to be looked into. But, oh yeah, it's still a good one-off, like, run-up, quick stats, hit. Stats, uh, a 15 on constitution, and dex, and a 13 on strength. Alright. Uh, excuse me. So we also have the second wind and the maneuver save ability. I don't know what those are, so... Second wind is you can re regain 1d10 plus 1 HP. Okay, that's helpful. Just literally give yourself a small health boost. That is definitely helpful. And he's a fighter. You've got a Hill Dwarf Druid. Uses a scimitar, a dagger, and a sling. Knows poison spray, and guidance, cure wounds, animal friendship, fairy fire, and speak with animals. Mm -hmm. So how many times a day can he do... So if those are the spells he knows, do I also I still have to do, like, spells per day? Yeah, I'm sure there's something to do with spell slots of being a level one. All right. You have two slots. So you can use two without a, without a, without a rest. Okay. But, uh, so I'll probably put two cure wounds up. A 16 in wisdom, a 16 in constitution, and a, and a 13 in dex. Dang. Let's hope for a higher. 16 is pretty nice. For decks. A drow wizard. Ooh. Yeah, I thought so too when I saw drow mount its way into the mix. I was like, that's a little different. All these dwarves and stuff hanging out in the group, man. Like, what was it? Two dwarves, an elf, and a, dwarf, a gnome. Elf, gnome, a rock dwarf. Gnome. Like, yeah. The two hill dwarves and the rock gnome, they're, they're going to be happy together. <laughs> but I don't want them. And you got the, dro the drow, who's a, who's a wizard. All right. They use a quarter staff and a dagger. They know Ray of Frost, Mage Armor, Protection from Evil and Good, and Sleep. What was the Mage Armor? Mage Armor, yeah. So, uh, did that go... Did it stack on top of real armor? All things we'd have to look up. Uh, but we've got book access. That's no right. worry. Let's see. Uh, top, da, 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 top stats. Oh my god, they're 180 years old. Old bitch. Yeah, fucking drow, man. Oh, well, I guess he's not old. He'd be like an eighteen-year-old. Yeah, pretty young still. But you know, That's perspective why he's only. All right, so intelligence and dex are fifteens, fourteen on constitution. All right. You got a half orc wizard. A lot of <laughs> magic users. I tell you. Fucking half orc. Quarter staff and a dagger. Do I have a full orc? They do chill touch, minor illusion, prestidigitation, mage armor, long strider. And charm person. Eh, I'm not really much for wizards. Top stats are 15 intelligence, constitution 15, 13 dex. Alright, two more. Two more, two more. And then, how many fighters did you Bear say? Bear with us, folks, huh? How many fighters did you say? How many fighters? Yeah. Uh, I was wrong. I, uh, oh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, here's another fighter. Right. A wood elf fighter. Ooh. I'm not a fan of wood elves, but my friends used to be wood elves, and I feel like they'd be cool with the our game games. They use a maul and a javelin. Right. They have the fighting style, great weapon fighting. Probably gives them bonuses on attack. If they're using a two-handed weapon, if they roll a one or a two in their damage, they can re-roll it. Nope. Basically, if they don't hit hard enough, they get to hit a little <laughs> harder. I do like that. What's that strength at? Uh, we'll get there. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -ba. New fighters they also action. know second wind. Well, if they get knocked down or something. The screenshots. <laughs> the volume bar <laughs> in there. Oopsie. Whoopsie. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. A 15 strength, a 15 dex, and a 14 constitution. Sorry, do that again. <laughs> 15 strength. Alright. 15 dex. Alright. 14 constitution. Something enough for a fighter. And we have a half orc rogue. Hmm. That's different. Usually half orcs are. Fighters. A rapier, short bow, and a dagger. 
they have the sneak attack ability. What feet it would be called. They uh, sneak attack. And, oh, they know thieves can't, which they can just it's a, they can speak in the thieves slang. Not a lot of special abilities on this one. Sneak is a good one if it's one. yeah. They have sneak attack. Cool. Which uh, once per turn deal extra damage to one creature hit if attack with advantage using finesse or ranged weapon. Don't need advantage of an enemy. Oh, you don't have to be target. You don't have to be close to him to do it. But the sneak attack, you, you have to be far away. It, it can be optional. So like if I like if that not attack opportunity, if I'm flanking him. More reading. That's all. It doesn't even say it have to be sneaking. It's just probably have to be uh, flanking him because that's how it was in Pathfinder. If you had a rogue get behind somebody and flank him, every once per turn you get the sneak attack damage. Which is like, you know, 1d6 well, that's for every you, two you, levels. Using finesse or range, it, here's the thing. If there is a flanking, you can use sneak attack and not be hit. You don't need advantage if enemy of the target is within five feet of it and isn't incapacitated. And you don't have disadvantage. So if the factors are met, you don't have to be in stealth to use it. Cool. I like that. I like his weapon. I'm fucking right there with this fucking... And that's a shit. What is his Ooh, stats? they have the half orc trait, which is relentless endurance, zero HP to one HP, which I think means when you get knocked to death, you get one more. You get one little bit of. <laughs> you get rage. one HP left to boost you back on your feet to keep trying for one more. You get like a little orc rage just pisses you off that someone tried to kill you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Fifteen dex, fifteen constitution, and thirteen intelligence. They yeah, I guess a rogue does have good intelligence orc. because they have skills. Do they have it? Skills in fifth edition? Yeah, Every, right. everything's got skills and stuff. So high intelligence gives me more skills. Hope that wasn't too boring. I uh, know that he was uh, pretty interested in getting this information. I mean, for editing purposes, so we want to just do a quick rundown and just leave it all in. Rundown of what now? Of just all of the things instead of having all that in, or do you want to just leave all that in? I'm going to leave it in. Fuck it. We're fine, we're fine. Alright, so... Well, that was, uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> That's alright. So, I'm definitely thinking about the Wood Elf Fighter and the half -orc, or half orc Rogue. I'm not really much into Wizards. Uh, I don't see how much they would really benefit me with trying to be in a survival situation. I'm not good enough with them to use it. So, I guess I'll... Since I want to try to keep this team alive as long as possible, I think I'm going to skip... Go with wizards. I'm thinking of druid because I do like him having the cure cure wounds. He gives me, I think you said two cure abilities that per day I can at least try to help. He can be my secondary healer while I have a cleric. Yeah, you could at least uh, use cure wounds twice if you hadn't used your other spell slot already. I'll just have to put like cure wounds in the spell slot to, for probably the beginning of the day. Yeah, because that's how your spell after rest. For him. Or however it is that character prepares their spells. Yeah. So, for the cleric, I mean... I, yeah, you still have the option of two clerics and two fighters. Could you read the uh, Hell Dwarf's abilities once more? Like Hell the Dwarf spells? Cleric? Yeah, he knows Light, Resistance, Spare the Dying, and Thaumaturgy. Alright. Which, the other one also knows Light and Thaum. That's only two it knows? It knows Ray of Frost and Sacred Flame. So a couple of damage spells. As Compared well to the as more the, the Hill Dwarf knows Bless and Cure Wounds, Command, Bane, Inflict Wounds, and Healing Word. So he knows a couple of heal spells. The, uh, the Elf Cleric knows Fog Cloud, Thunder Wave, Bless, Cure Wounds, and Bane. That Cleric's a little more aggressive. It is way more aggressive for a cleric. I do like that. But they know cure wounds. So I think I'm going to go with the high elf cleric. A little more aggressive with a small amount of healing balance between them and the druid. So, what, just send me a screenshot of uh, those and I'll run those as my character sheets? Oh, did you pick that? Uh, which ones did you pick? I chose... Between the two fighters? High elf cleric. Yeah. The druid. Uh, Hildorf druid. The wood elf fighter. And the half orc rogue. Okay, yeah. I the half orc rogue, I was really thinking about just because, like I said, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Hmm. And then you threw out the rapier and the the crossbow or short short bow, right? Yeah. And then go with that sneak attack. I think team him up with the fighter while I have uh, 
the cleric and the druid in the back shooting shit. Two front, two back. Yeah, I figured, like, I thought it balanced out really well that... I mean, it never, it never offered you a direct option for a, a really tanky mm. character. No. But... Well, uh, the half orc rogue has a weird potential that probably takes some hits. He does have a good con, but the thing is, it's the fire. He's more the like fire a fighter will draw aggro because okay. So how I I can't remember how like javelins work. Where it's just a thrown attack. Oh shit! It's a ranged throw. Oh, I think you can opt you can to use, use it a as a spear. Yes. I mean, you can if use I'm you can thrust with a javelin. I don't think I should have to take negative using it like that. Because no. But what would be my reach for it? It's like it's a ten foot weapon, probably. Yeah, there's definitely a length on the description of the weapon. So I'm gonna use that to hold him back, while my uh, rogue tries to get around him and fucking jab him in the side. Mm-hmm. Shiv him in the kidney. <laughs> it's like I got you. I got Damn you. Yeah, what shift. for? You all getting fucked up. <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, like, if you folks can't tell, we've been looking forward to playing some D and D for a while. And because I realized that it's going to take a long time for me to craft my own campaigns, we had to take another fast route. And I'm thinking maybe once I figure out my base idea for how I want to run this one, we're, I'm even considering we record it. Just our own little, uh, what we call it, Hexcom? Hexcom. <laughs> oh, Hex. Oh... Uh... I hope you folks like puns. <laughs> I think I can actually do pretty well with these characters. I'm uh, I'm excited for it. Well, yeah, no, that's, that's the one thing. Like, even if you didn't sit down and craft it yourself, like, you no, know, well, still enjoy different. playing them all the same. Now it's more skill based than just like dicking around. And I gotta discover who these characters are. Oh yeah, that's all the. the well, I'll send you the skill shots once we wrap script. The skill shots, the screenshots when, once we wrap up, and uh, kind of like design you can them look over. You can look be. over all their information, see what their backgrounds are, and then just just design a backstory if you want to really commit yourself into into bonding with these characters. Not too much, but I still want to give them so much of a backstory. Yeah, and you got to have a personality. That, all right, but like, wait. So the question is, if they're so replaceable. Am I still playing all four characters? And Honestly, then when they die, I think or what we'll do, I mean, as we're going through and playing the game, you will be delivering, you will be like, you know, coming up with what the characters are saying and doing, but we can go back later in, in our own time as well and record voice lines for all of them. Well, what I'm getting at is in XCOM, you don't really have much of a character development or you don't. Yeah, see them but, outside of combat. Yeah, but it's... So if I'm doing adventures, adventuring... Yeah, like, there's still or going to be moments of dialogue and non-combat situations where, uh, given a cut, like I said, give it some time to be a little clunky, we'll, we'll get a flow for it. Oh, I, I, I had an idea. Uh, so where it's going to be me just trying to do a cold control where it's not meant to be, like, an emotional thing. Kind of build in some uh, other elements, maybe. What I was thinking about was maybe like world building, and maybe like starting off with my own little four-man army and just like either that or trying to. I don't know. Just my thought. <laughs> All right, we start our story with our four heroes entering a motherfucking tavern because that is always how level one stories start. I mean, it's it's written in the books. It has to. It is the law. Uh, I mean, it's that simple. I mean, we, we we cold open the same way we cold open this thing. I don't know, but what I'm saying is where, uh, do I want to have an emotional attachment with them, or do I just want to throw them in a battle, and if they die, I recruit a new one? How cold am I meant to be to these characters? Am I a warlord, or am I... I th- I'd say just go with giving them very base personality ideas, so that you can always just kind of work with their trope. So you don't have to try to have an entire, you know, heart and soul in mind for the character. Just to how would they react instinctively to, to this. I don't know, but also another thing that differs from XCOM and D&D is the amount of fights, you know, before arrest. Usually you can have multiple fights before arrest and by the end of it, you know, you're dead. If the DM's trying to be a dick, by the time you have, like, no spells or anything left. But where in XCOM it's, like, just one fight... 
then you get out. Well, this this isn't going to be anything like XCOM, except you control the entire unit instead of one character. That's just one man D and D. That's because we're that's losers. That's because you're playing one man D and D. That's not XCOM. I want to be like, uh, I want to be the man like telling them what they have to do, even though I am technically controlling the characters. It's like I'm not wanting to try somewhere. We're not like having to get emotional attached. We're like I'm not going to have to interact with the NPCs. Unless it's somebody, like, talking to the general or... Wait, okay, I don't... I'm not going to force you to have <laughs> in-group conversations with yourself. No, but I'm saying, like... Like? <laughs> I don't know. We're just going to have to see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why It's going to be clunky. I feel like it's going to be hectic. But I think I'm going to have a lot of fun. That's, That's the hope. <laughs> Alright, so, um... We didn't really know where this was going... But I think we found out that uh, this is going to be titled the D&D episode. And at 40 minutes, we're going to call it here. Thank you very fucking much, and we'll talk to you next time. But what if it's not at 40 minutes, then you just fucked up. <laughs> Fuck your editing. Put in five oh, minutes this one's your of editing. dead silence. This one's your editing. Oh, cool. Unedited oh, upload. I, I hope you wait. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>